Guys, welcome back to another video and following this trend that we've been creating here on the channel recently about black and white photographers or around black and white photographers, we today have to explore the beautiful work of Olga Karlovac, which is how I believe her name is pronounced in Croatian, where she is originally from. If you're Croatian, let me know down below if this is correct. Um, but yeah, we've been creating this kind of trend. We've talked about, if you remember, Alexi Titarenko. We've talked about Daido Moriyama. We've talked about recently Ouija. So if you want to check that video out, I'm going to leave it linked somewhere uh, because I think it was very, very cool to put it together. And today we have the photos of someone who, you know, it's very abstract, very expressive and very artsy in a way. And I'm going to be talking about these photos, but trust me when I say that there's not just the photos are inspirational, but I think what um, Karlovac has to say about her career, how she came upon photography and, and her photography philosophy is super important and especially how she uses motion and blur. So grab a drink, make yourself comfortable and let's go straight to another video. <laughs> The story of Olga Karlovac and her path to photography is an interesting one to look at. Karlovac is a self-taught photographer who originally studied and worked in economy, but in her words, the need for a creative outlet led her to photography. Quote, a friend who is a psychologist saw that I was kind of desperate and that I couldn't move on in my everyday life and told me that I needed to do something that I had to find a way to express myself. And I think that's exactly it when I look at the photos of Karlovac, because to me, this is an outlet to express her vision, her way of seeing and feeling the world. But Karlovac continues. Eventually, she, the friend, told me to buy myself a camera. And even though I hadn't thought about photography for a whole decade, I just did it and it felt good. Then step by step, I developed my style and it became a great habit, part of my life. And I feel much better in doing photography than working as an economist. And honestly, I can't fault her here because if in a parallel universe I had worked as an economist, I too would be desperate to get out of the situation. But jokes aside, I think there's two important things that we can take from here. The first and foremost is that you don't have to necessarily have a, an extended uh, background in photography in order to become a photographer and to be somewhat successful at it. Because the idea here, or at least to me, is that photography as a means of expression comes from within, from the relationships we photographers forge with the world and how we express said vision through the images we capture. And then second, I think photography needs to be a part of your life. It needs to be there, whether that is through the act of photographing, but also through the act of learning photography, through observing the work other people are developing and printing your own work and reflecting upon it. So to me, to become a photographer, this also entails that you find time to dedicate to it and to think about your path, observe and reflect on your work and get inspired by others. And one thing I actually think we can learn or we can take from here as well is that no matter what your background is in terms of also what your full-time job was or still is or, you know, your part-time job is, whether it's in economy, teaching sciences, pottery or taxidermy, I think the idea is that holding a certain another activity that is so dominant or was dominant at, at some point in your life, it has equipped you with a unique awareness and empathy. And I want to quote you what Karlovac has said about this. Many great photographers don't really have a background in art or in photography. I think for me, having a profession in economics, getting to know the world from that perspective made me try to find another way of expressing myself in a different, more human way. 
Economics did give me a different sort of awareness. It made me try and find different ways of looking at things and how to show them. However, Kailovac's style in my eyes is one where the camera is used to predominantly showcase motion, blur and emotion, despite the fact that some of her photos can appear at first glance quite bleak. That is perhaps due to the fact that she works exclusively in black and white and often during extremely dark and gloomy weather conditions. This of course gives the images a certain characteristics that make them fall into the realm of the abstract and I'd venture to say they have a sort of lyricism as well, as if we're seeing some kind of visual poetry which follows the line that many of the photographers we've been studying recently have created. Alexei Titarenko and Daido Moriyama to give you an example. Because these were also photographers that used grain, or in Titarenko's case motion and blur, to convey ideas and emotions, and one of the most dominant ideas I find in Karlovac's images is that of timelessness. And I wondered if that was the main reason why she chose to portray the world through this play of motion and blur. And I wasn't too far off. Because when I read an interview with her, she said, quote, For me, it's more than just capturing a shot that freezes things. I think you get a wide perspective, but it really came intuitively. And I think it, motion and blur, gives other dimensions to an image. It becomes a period in time that offers many different ways to see things. And this is why I said this video could be interesting when we look at um, Karlovac's words and not just her images. Because this goes in, you know, kind of alignment with what I've been preaching here on my channel for a really long time, that photography is also a job of looking within, um, finding answers, and also trying to build uh, your own language, your own visual language, which is the biggest challenge in photography, is to communicate things just through visual objects, right? And so, to me personally, I think that the job of a photographer, it's also about um, finding his or hers own visual language, the way that their photographs can communicate ideas, feelings, um, or something of value to the viewer. Or maybe not, because viewers are different and some people might find your images valuable and some others might not find them. And that's okay. But I think like at the end of the day, the way um, Karlovac's use of motion and blur uh, kind of, you know, I can compare it with Titarenko's use of, use of motion and blur. It's to convey ideas, it's to communicate something to you, to make you feel something. So I think that's his, that is super important um, in this context. Karlovac creates her images by mostly shooting through windows using abstract reflections created by rain and setting long exposure times. As for her equipment, I found out that she uses mostly a Ricoh GR or GR2, which makes sense when we look at her images due to the height contrast and grain. Like Daido Moriyama, Karlovac uses cameras like these that have high contrasting black and white presets which is why we might find similarities between hers and his images. But of course, they alternatively can push this by opting for a higher ISO. And she has said that she prefers working with black and white because it is simple and strong. And truth be told, simplicity sometimes is the key to make sense of complex things. And one of the things I think that is super interesting about this line of photography, um, and, and it's not at random that I've chose to talk about Olga Karlovac today, is because the people that we've been talking about recently, Olga Karlovac today, um, you know, Daida Moriyama, Bruce Guild, and Ouija, um, Alexei Titarenko, these are all photographers that really challenge the concept that you and I have of beauty and what is beauty. Um, they make concept of, they make beauty sounding, um, you know, relative and subjective, which I believe it is, um, because sometimes beauty can be in, you know, the controversial can be in things that we don't necessarily consider beautiful. Um, if we look at the classical most classical definition of beauty, it'll tell us that beauty is the quality of being pleasant and attractive, especially to look at. And so looking at these images, we learn that sometimes beauty doesn't have to have standards, doesn't have to have an agenda, that beauty may not be the most attractive or pleasing thing to look at. Instead, 
I think beauty is a type of quality that resides even in things we don't consider pleasing to look at. There's beauty in pain, there's beauty in extreme grain, and there's beauty sometimes where we don't necessarily see it. So I think that's the biggest lesson as well today um, and that we've taken or that I've taken personally from the recent videos that we've been doing. And yeah, I guess that with this we reach the end. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. All the you know feedback is so welcome. So write down below your feedback your thoughts on this, other photographers that you'd like to see here on the channel. This um, Olga Karlovac's work was actually a suggestion from one of you in a recent comment in some video. Um, I can't remember now, but it was super, super interesting and it helped me fill in the sort of, you know, um, narrative that I've been trying to build with these last videos. And yeah, I'll see you here for another video very soon. Take care, stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, and I'm out. Peace.